Welcome everyone, I'm Jill Nicolini and this is Bold and Brave with Jill, where the inspired voices of today share their journeys and their wisdom to achieving positive new beginnings. Up next is Miriam Ortiz Pino, a certified professional organizer and business coach. Miriam empowers entrepreneurs and creative types to achieve more by removing the stuff that stands in the way of what they want. By designing simple systems that work for your home or business, Miriam creates the environment you need to live your best life. Please welcome Miriam Ortiz Pino. How are you today? I'm great, thanks for having me, Jill. Great, so let's talk about all this stuff that gets in everyone's way and how you can help us remove that and help us live a little better, more of a peaceful life. Right, so the first step is always to recognize that stuff might be in your way. Yeah. <laughs> if, it's, if it's not bothering you, it's not really a problem, right? So if it's bothering you, figure out what you want instead. Great. Well, let's talk a little bit about mindset. How important is mindset when it comes to productivity and getting things done? I know you're big into that, right? Yeah. Well, it turns out that, you know, our brains work in the way we think and then we feel something and then we take action on it. So mindset before mechanics is always a great way to approach things because that way you have a plan of action and you can figure out how you might deal with obstacles along the way. Um, and it can be super easy if you just think, I'm going to organize my kitchen so that I can prepare nurturing and supportive meals for my family and make it easy. You're going to organize your kitchen a little bit differently than if you say, I just need a bunch of food to grab. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. If you think it through a little bit, you're going to have a better result in the end. Well, speaking of mindset, there's something about getting things organized, at least for me. You know, I have piles mm -hmm. in my house. I have a four and six year old who so have toys. I have bills and it makes me feel so unrest and I feel nervous and anxious all the time about it. Not until yes. I get things organized do I actually feel calm and I can go, Ah, take that sigh of relief. So what is it about the process of organization, which clearly you're an expert in, that really drives people and puts them in a better mindset? Well, the way our brains process information is they are actually kind of a, they work on a predictive mode. So if they see a lot of clutter and stuff around, your unconscious brain is actually trying to solve that problem, whether you're actively trying to solve that or not. So it takes a lot of energy and can deplete your um, uh, your calm, really. That's where overwhelm comes from. So the more places you can set up an effective system and routine for dealing with your stuff, the more likely your unconscious brain doesn't have as much of that stuff to process and you will have more energy. Great, let's, um, let's it, get some tips now from you. We need yeah. to talk systems, we need to talk routines. Please give us advice. I'm one of them who needs it as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, you hit on two of the important ones. If you have kids, you need a way of dealing with their toys and, and their activity stuff. I if use you have plastic bins, but I'm getting sick and tired of looking at them and they are overflowing, let's be honest. Not yeah, good. so you gotta declutter. You yeah. gotta regularly go through, and depending on the age of your kids, you can do it without them up until about age four. Um, and then you need to get small amounts of help from them, like have them pick their favorites so those don't ever disappear, but cut it off at a certain level and okay. then you can deal with it. And always, you know, anything that's broken or missing or the 12 pieces of extra stuff that came in the one kit that they never use, just start getting rid of the little easy bits first and then your life becomes a lot easier. Yeah, or the little free toys they get from like Happy Meals. I mean, yeah. we do collect those, not a good thing. <laughs> No, you can even make a, a rule that that's the kind of toy that they get to play with that day. Yeah. And then it goes in the donation box. Yeah. Or if it's a specific collectible type one that they're actually really interested in, you can have a little bit of a different um, vibe on that one for, yeah. for everybody's sanity. And teaching them the importance of giving and sharing and donating. We did list some stuff on Craigslist. So what about those at yeah. home who don't have children? Let's talk business. Let's talk personal in their lives. What type of routine? 
routines yeah. and systems. Are we really talking about that can be effective, Miriam? Yeah, it's all about the paperwork which isn't actually paperwork. It's any information that comes into you, whether it's electronic or paper via the mail mm -hmm. or stuff coming from um, events you go to and you grab a bunch of items at, at the expo. All those things that are paper that are in your way, when you don't deal with them right away or don't have a system for where to put them until you have a moment to deal with them, they become in the way, they become cluttered, they become overwhelming, and then it's even harder to make the decisions. So deciding on a few things early on that is just going to be a rule, like I never look at coupons. Those just go automatically in the recycle bin yeah. because the amount of time it takes to look at the coupons is money I could be making doing something else, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, not it's true. Really going to save me as much as you might think. Um, of course, that's going to depend on on what your situation is. But if you make a rule that you don't open any, you know, offers for new credit cards or those kinds of or political campaign things, yes. those things can now no longer be a decision you need to make every day. So where do we get started when it comes to organization? Let's hear your advice from the expert. Where do we get started? It actually doesn't matter. So a lot of people put it off because it might not be the right place to start. And what if the other place was the right place to start? And what if they did it wrong? There's no wrong way to do organizing. It's the right way for you and how you think about your stuff. So if something's annoying you, work on that area first. Um, what you don't want to do is zigzag. So once you pick an area to start with, complete that area before you move on to the next area and then move on to the next annoying area and hmm. the next one. And know that there's always going to be a pile of stuff going around the house with you or around the office with you that is stuff you're not quite sure about yet. And that's okay. Just make that a category, put it in a box or a bag that kind of travels around with you so that when you come to the part that goes with the thing in the kitchen that you knew the part was somewhere and before you can donate it, once you match those, you know what you're doing with it. How did you become so good at organizing? Would you mind sharing your background? <laughs> So people aren't born organized, but some people do like a little more order in terms of um, clarity and, and la less distractions. And so I was one of those kids that lined stuff up so it would be less overwhelming. And my mom is not super organized, but she really wanted to be. So she was always <laughs> so trying systems. You were a helper. You were putting your shoes together side by side at the front door. Good. <laughs> exactly. And at a certain point, I realized we just keep switching systems instead of getting the one to work for everybody by adjusting it to our life. And so it became kind of my hobby to troubleshoot why it wasn't working. And so I carried it through all my jobs and then I decided to work for myself. And so how do you get other people on board with organization? Well, again, it's kind of like not judging people for what's important to them. You got to take care of your own stuff first. So if you live in a household where it's messy and you feel like it's other people's deal, you should probably look at your own stuff first. Just look at it, deal with it, your personal stuff, then move to the shared spaces and then also tell everybody else involved, whether it's um, family or coworkers or whatever, why you're doing what you're doing. When people would complain about how their family wouldn't put stuff away, they would spend more time planning revenge and complaining about the husband not putting the socks in the hamper than it would have taken to just put the socks in the hamper. It, you're the one it's bothering. Yep. <laughs> um, and it never fails by like the third or fourth session I have with clients, the person that is, it's no big deal or not noticing that there's a mess is suddenly all of a sudden taking care of their own stuff because the expectation and the standard of the whole household or office has improved. And so it's no longer appropriate to leave your stuff out. There's something that I see there in your background, which I think is important, and I'm assuming you're going to recommend this to your potential clients. <laughs> Labeling. It looks like you have your binders oh. and boxes labeled. Can you talk about the importance of that? Yeah, and it's, it's funny. Um, I own a label maker, and I've only actually used it with three clients ever. 
I use, those are all file labels with Sharpie written on them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's fine, um, but it's clearly organized. Yeah. You know what binder to pull, if it's a bill section, if it's the exactly. utilities, if it's the mortgage, but you have everything precise and in order. So I, I could just look at, yeah, your background for a while because it looks so nice and neat. Uh -huh. Not like my bookshelf. <laughs> It's, um, I'm actually not a super over container organizer. I am very much, uh, know where it is and where you can get it easily when you need it. Um, but it is very handy, especially in group environments to label so that other people can help you put stuff away or in a, an, uh, office so that you can delegate items. Yeah. Um, and so that's the most important part of labeling. It's so stuff returns there. It's the placeholder for the item. So have a place for everything and keep it there. The two golden rules of organizing. Let me ask you this. Do you help people uh, or businesses as well when they're moving? I mean, as far as organizing, because that's a good time to kind of declutter, no? Well, if people have enough lead time, I can help them declutter before they move because that's the ideal time to do it. So you don't have to pay to have it moved and then have to re-decide on the other end. Um, so ideally, that's how it goes. Most of the time, though, people are just like, oh, my gosh, I'll just do it when we get there because I don't know what I'll need in the new place. <laughs> but why are you moving? <laughs> like, are you out of space or are you um, incapable of, of decorating? I do a lot of unpacking and, and setup so that we establish those homes and a place for everything to live from the beginning so that it's easier in the long run. But ideally, you want to kind of do it on both ends. Got it. Now, clearly you love what you do as a professional. Uh, you mm -hmm. shine, you're smiling, you know, when you're talking about organization. <laughs> Could you share with us this passion and some of your clients' experiences about how you've helped them and how it makes them feel and you feel mm -hmm. after things are done? I just recently, uh, in the fall, helped a client who had had to pivot and start working from home during COVID and had just kind of dumped all her office stuff on her dining room table. And it had been months and she realized she really should the set up a home office. growing and growing and growing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we started with her home office and we got that squared away. And I kept saying, you know, we should probably do your laundry room as well, because there was a little bit of backup and some overlap and things that kept migrating out to the dining room and to the office that really belonged in the, in the laundry room. And it was not super messy, but there was no rhyme or reason in there. Stuff was just stuffed on shelves wherever it fit. And she kept putting it off and we did almost the whole rest of the house. And she finally was like, okay, let's do the laundry room. We did it. And like half an hour after I left, she called me and she's like, I just threw in a load of laundry and it was the easiest experience I've ever had. I could see the washer and dryer. I can walk past everything without yes. things falling from the shelves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So sometimes it's the little things. What falls on you? What do you never know how to, you know, where it actually goes? What do you find yourself having to look for every time you look for it? Um, those are the things that are going to save you several minutes a day. I mean, if you think about it, if you spend five minutes, three or four times a week looking for your keys, <laughs> yes. that's almost six days a year. Wow. That's a vacation, right? <laughs> yes. Like, why would you not have a hook by your door once you realize yeah. that? All right. Systems and routines. <laughs> Miriam Ortiz, Pino, yes. thank you so much for your time today. Would you mind sharing your website before we go? Yep. It's morethanorganized.net. Lots of free resources on there. Great. Thank you for your time. We'll see you right back here soon. Stay tuned. Do you have a unique or special story to tell? We're currently seeking inspiring individuals to appear on our nationwide television show, Bold and Brave with Jill. Share your journey and make a true difference in the community and the world. Call 631-619-2050 or visit boldbravetv.com. Let us shine a light on you and share your story with the world. The time to be bold and brave is always. The time to call is now. Call 631-619-2050. Our next guests today are a dynamic duo, Susan Sneath and Gail McDonald. Susan is a life balance coach, humor consultant, facilitator, and award-winning actress who discovered the power of humor while battling cancer 31 years ago. 
Gail McDonald is a certified career and professional development coach and founder of Transcendent Self, a professional speaker and facilitator for almost 20 years. Gail has inspired an extensive array of audiences from diverse backgrounds in both the private and public sectors. Please welcome both Susan Sneath and Gail McDonald to the show. How are you? Uh -huh. Fabulous. Thank you for having us, Jill. We're so excited to be here. Thank you for being here. So you're both coaches, clearly friends, now working together. How did this all come about? Oh, my gosh. Well, it had to start at the beginning, and that was when we met. And we met when I was in a change myself. I was in my 50s and looking to think, how else could I make a living? And so I went to an employment search agency. I was going to work there as a facilitator. And I didn't have experience in that area. And they, I said, uh, you know, how, how would I get that? And they said, we have a training program. And I said, hmm, exactly what would that look like? <laughs> and they said, we'll have you shadow someone, right. one of our more experienced facilitators. So I go in there for a 3D workshop. I'm prepared to be invisible. I'm going to watch. I'm going to take notes. Who walks in the door but Gail? She was amazing. She draws everybody out. She's resourceful. She's friendly. And she drew me out and said in the middle of that workshop, well, what is your take on this, Susan? What's that? And I was amazed to find out that my performance background and my business background offered a slightly different perspective. Oh, the clients were delighted. We started working together and we found we just had sparks flying. Mm. And then we found that people would always say to us, we want more of what you've got. How can we have more of that? And so that's what Gail and I began to think of. Hmm, what could possibly come next after this? So Gail, quickly you became friends, clearly. Mm -hmm, and what mm -hmm. happened next? <laughs> so much happened next. We'll fast forward to COVID because that's when it really did start to spark for us. And when COVID hit, of course, we could not deliver the workshops in person anymore. And I thought, well, if we can't deliver them in person, why don't we just Zoom it? So I became very quickly a Zoomilitator, as yeah. I call it, yeah. and started to deliver online workshops. And it was at that point when they were looking for other facilitators that had delivered in person, and Susan jumped in. She had actually watched me deliver a presentation to a large group of people and was impressed as to how easy it looked for the, the platform. And so I had invited Susan to come on in and join. And she, again, jumped in as engaging as she is when we mm -hmm. were doing the workshops. And, you know, Jill, it was interesting. There seemed to be an energy that that uh, I can't even explain it. We just gelled. It's like we're in each other's heads. And it was truly amazing. And so while that was going on and we both started to do the Zoom workshops, I had also thought about how both of us love to serve and how else can we get people engaged and help them and support them and deal with the so many changes, not only going through COVID, but going through many other changes people experience in all walks of life. So I thought of doing a podcast and calling it Coaches Unplugged. And these ideas, of course, just pop into my head when I'm sleeping, which is really quite, <laughs> quite tiring, right? <laughs> and so, so then I realized that Susan and I had this amazing energy together, and I invited her to join me on that. So we spent hours on Zoom creating content for the podcast. And during that time, a a radio station, an online radio station, had seen an article that I had posted from an entrepreneur's magazine <laughs> and a photo, and they loved the article. And they said, we really like your ideas. We'd like to interview you on a 30-minute live hmm. interview. And I went, wow, that really? <laughs> like, <laughs> you gotta, like live, that means like Were you nervous? can't make mistakes. You would never uh, think, was, right? Well, yeah, I was as nervous as something I couldn't say on air right now. But okay, I was okay, I got it. That, right? <laughs> but you would never know. The two of you keep it. You would never know. Uh, you yeah, would never well, this is right? great to hear for sure. So, so the interview, so how did happened? it go? Oh, it was amazing. I received a message from someone saying, how would you like to have your own talk show? 
And I went, mm-hmm, sure. Really? <laughs> right? Yeah, this can't yeah. be real. Yeah. No. So positive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So I said yes and connected. And as I was speaking to the gentleman that was uh, letting me know about all of the ins and outs, I thought, I can't do it without Susan. Oh. We're, we're, yeah, we're joined at the mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then that was another open door. And and he said yes. And I'm like, okay. Well, the, And it was just, Jill, there was no resistance mm-hmm. in any of this process. And our main focus is just to help folks and get a message out there that, that it's okay to not be okay. It's yeah. okay to be fearful Look, of change. Look, change and is scary. Yep, fearful. You just said. Oh, totally scary. Scary for everyone. Yes. But if you don't have that fear, yeah. that scare mm-hmm. in you, that you'll never know what's next or what could have been or what might have been. So yes. here we are, ladies, yes. with the change zone. Tell me a little bit about yeah. what your show is uh, going to highlight and entail. Oh, my gosh. You see, you really nailed it on the head when you say it's about you got to have that fear. Mm. But also we want to mix so that we've got a safe place Mm -hmm. for people to explore change. So that's the ups. That's the downs. That's the yoikes. (laughs) That's the booyah. Right. Mm -hmm. And safe means it's got to be respectful. Mm. Now, I'm a cancer survival, Jill. I've had to live my life as if I got five minutes or 50 years, whichever comes first. What does hope mean? Mm. Hope means simply saying yes Mm. to life. Mm -hmm. So you go, huh, well, what could that be if it's the ups of change? There's so many people that you could help with change. No kidding. We've got, right, because we've got the people who are the frontline workers. We've got the helping professionals. We've got the stay-at-home parents. We've got the retired folks who are wondering what their life is going to add up to. When am I going to grow up? And they're in their 50s. Yeah, and people panicking and, over know, the pandemic and this low, year and a half right? and the anxiety, so, the stress, loss of job, loss of self, right? loss of homeschooling, right? so, and, uh, new jobs, right? new careers. I mean, there's so much going you on. got it. So that's where you talk about the ups is kind of easy. Take it, run with it, deal with a little bit of fear. The downs Mm -hmm. are what if you're burnt out? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if you're blocked? Well, we've got ways, as you can tell, we are deeply serious, but serious simply means viewed as important. So we're going to lighten it up and and release with laughter Mm -hmm. and joy so that we can have some fun while we're doing it. Then we can move into the yoikes of change. Now, that's when you're heading off to work and your water bottle opens in your lunch kit <laughs> and everything's soaked. Yoikes is Hopefully when you find water. out you've got cancer. <laughs> right? Not, like, not for a punch. Right? right? So we are going to work with folks. You get to play in okay. the change zone. Mm-hmm. You get to learn, unlearn, relearn. Mm-hmm. How could I respond rather than react? Mm -hmm. So that's all about making the best of what comes to you. Mm -hmm. But you know, Jill, that's not enough. I can be the best I am. I could make the best of what's coming. Mm -hmm. But really, Jill, it's about bringing out the best in yourself and others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's about gathering ourselves up so that we can play Mm-hmm. We can have those conversations because our show is going to be interactive. Mm-hmm. People can call in. We'll interact with you. We can come up. We've come up with all sorts of, Gail, you're full of it. Resources, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, love that humor. Depends who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> right? So talk a little bit about how you see that we can help folks, Gail. Oh, my goodness. The resources that have been the most valuable to both of us, I could say, Susan, is Mm -hmm. the people that we meet. Between us, Jill, we've met thousands of people, we've Mm -hmm. coached, we've facilitated, and they tell us stories. Mm -hmm. And if we don't hear people's stories, we can't gain a different perspective. We're both educated. We both read and learn and continue to grow. But it's really the experiences that we both have with change and the things that we've heard from clients. Mm -hmm. And I'm, 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 I'm speaking for both of us, I think. We're so truly blessed with everyone that's come into our path because both Susan and myself have this crazy ability to just have people tell us everything (laughs) within 30 seconds. You're like hairstylists, right? When you sit in that chair. Yeah, exactly. Better because we don't clap. uh, Yeah, I'm a bit clumsy. It could come out. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I'll never leave unhappy with you. No. (laughs) 
but people yeah. feel that energy that we bring mm-hmm. and we just really want to support people as they're struggling with whatever they're struggling with. Well, why do you all think that coaches really need their own private space to be unplugged? Oh, okay. I want to be, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to take Yes, this you one. take that. You run with it. <laughs> you know, you know, Jill, we still are in a, in a time of labeling. Hmm. So we come in, yes, with our expertise, fair yeah. enough. But when we want a place to be unplugged, it means it's a level playing field, mm-hmm. Jill. Mm-hmm. We have our expertise, mm-hmm. but we are, take that off. Mm-hmm. That's part of be who you are. Mm-hmm. Because in whatever stage, and this is what I've had to learn as a cancer survivor, I can't say, I I just hope I can get through this next time and then it's going to be better a month from now. Mm -hmm. I go, I live with joy. Mm -hmm. If I can get the practical things taken care of, let's bring some color and depth and meaning into my life. Mm -hmm. So coaches unplugged, it's a reminder to us and everyone Mm -hmm. that although they're going to be looking at making a living and making a difference, Mm -hmm. this is where you genuinely kick off your designation Mm -hmm. and let's really be where we are Mm -hmm. and then move forward Mm -hmm. to how can you make the best of where you are with whatever resources you have. You know, Jill, when we have Mm, an emergency it brings out the best in people Mm -hmm. it really does people gel we know that my passion jill is let's do that Mm. all the time Mm -hmm. yeah why wait for that emergency right Let's right, do it right. now. Make the most of our lives. Yeah. Life is so precious. Uh, you know, it's one thing that we've learned from this pandemic, right? How precious mm-hmm. life is. And in fact, we're all mm-hmm. in it together. Uh, we're all not yeah, alone. Yes. Um, let's live our best life now. Yeah. And yet we'll guarantee mm-hmm. that we will still bring, we'll make that a safe place. Mm-hmm. We'll build that firm foundation. Mm-hmm. And we can have some fun doing it because we Absolutely. Right. Well, yeah. I can't no, wait. Enough. And where can we yeah. find you all on the World Wide Web? Social media, uh, website. Okay, yeah. So my website mm-hmm. is transcendentselfco.com. Mm-hmm. And on social media, can we find the two of you, the dynamic duo, together yeah. yet? Uh, uh, not together. We're, we're working so on that. Close to that. Yeah. We're on LinkedIn. Yep. Mm-hmm. London, Dale Facebook, McDonald, Twitter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Susan yeah. Sneath. I'm following you on Twitter now, my friend. <laughs> I have to Honestly, get you back because I can. Yeah. I will. See, I'm more of an Instagram yeah. Facebooker, but I also tweet as yeah. well. Oh, but yes. ladies, right. it's been a pleasure having you here. Really, Gail and Susan, thank you for doing what you're doing. Um, the change thank zone. You. Looking forward to it, yeah. to watch all the yeah. changes that you're going to help so many people yeah. and make amazing impacts on their lives. Thank you for being yeah. here with us today. Jill, thank you so much. We're grateful. Thank you. We'll see you next time.